Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. Well, hey there, my friend. I hope you are having a wonderful day. In case you're new here, my name is Deanna Yates, and you are listening to episode 166 of the Wanna Be Clutter-Free podcast. Last week, I mentioned that I wanted to interview my daughter for today's show, and thankfully, she agreed, and so we recorded an episode, and I'm excited to bring it to you today. So it was a really fun experience for me to get to kind of hear her talk about how we declutter in our house, what she likes about it, what she doesn't like about it. We talk about something she wants to change in her room, which she hadn't told me before, so that was really nice to get to know that, and just a couple of other little extra things that you know, sometimes we don't take the time out to really sit down and have these long conversations. And we chatted for 45 minutes today, which was just so nice. And it lit me up to be able to talk to her that long and really get her feedback. And it was a lot of fun. So I'm so thankful that she decided to join me and actually record the show today. But before I get ahead of myself, I want to say a big thank you to you for joining me today. I know life is busy and I am honored that you are here and you're taking some time uh, to join me for this episode. I really don't take that lightly and I will do my best to give you examples and strategies that you can take with you in your everyday life. I know today's going to be a little bit different because it's a little bit more of a conversation. It's not super tactical and we don't give a lot of tips, although it is really interesting to hear my daughter's perspective on what she likes and how she prefers us to declutter. She does have some tips for you. So she uh, was talking to both you as the parent and to your kids um, about how decluttering has worked for her, what she likes and what she suggests you do to start decluttering with your kids. So I think you will really like it. But I want you to know that I am here for you. So if you have any questions about this episode, if you want more information, you can always reach out to me and I would love to know how I can help you more. So you can DM me on Instagram or you can message me on Facebook. In both places, I am at wannabeclutterfree or you can comment on this post on my website. You can find that at wannabeclutterfree.com slash 166. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 166 for this episode. And I will have show notes there. We're going to link to a few additional resources that we talk about on the show that can help you on your journey if you're looking for some more open-ended toys or what we've done to organize a few of the things in our house. We'll have some resources there for you. And if you enjoyed this podcast, can you please do me a favor and leave a rating and a review for the show? You can rate it on most podcast listening apps, but you can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts, or you can leave a comment on this specific episode in Spotify. And your reviews are the lifeblood for the show. They help me reach more listeners. They help me get amazing guests for you on the show. And it also means a ton to me because I love reading those reviews and understanding what it is that you're getting out of the show, what you like, what resonates with you. And so just thank you so much for taking that time and uh, giving back to me a little bit. I really appreciate it. And so now let's get to my conversation with my daughter. All right. Well, hi. Welcome to Wanna Be Clutter Free. How you doing? Good. Awesome. So I am very excited to have you here today. This one's going to be a little bit different. I know you're giving me a very weird look because I'm talking to you in my podcast voice and you normally hear my mom voice. But uh, so this will be a lot of fun today. So thank you for joining. I want to know, I want you to be honest, please. I'm not going to be offended by anything you say. Okay. So can you promise you'll be honest today? Yeah. Okay, great. Be honest. I want to know what it's like for you having a mom who's always decluttering and organizing and trying to get the house in order. Well, I do like organizing myself. It's Mm -hmm. nice. And then you can find everything easily. But, yeah, it's kind of weird because, like, we declutter my room sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you use it. So, what do you mean I use it? Yeah, like sometimes you use the things that I declutter in 
Like if you're doing the 30 day declutter oh, challenge. Ah, yeah. You sometimes use the things from my room. Oh, right. Like I count those in our decluttering mm-hmm. sw- tally. But yeah. I mean, it does count. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've done a few of those. Mm-hmm. Actually, you were the impetus for the first one of those. The very first time we did one of those avalanche declutter challenges, you had just decluttered your room or you'd wanted to just declutter your room. It was before your birthday. And we've got rid of so much stuff. And you inspired me to go through the townhouse we were living at the time and declutter more. And I wanted some way to keep track and count and kind of have a challenge. So I took that uh, the minimalist challenge, and I turned it backwards so that I would start with 30 items and go backwards. So that was all actually thanks to you. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> now, UFC, we're learning new things together today. Yeah. All right, so what there? So are there some things that you like about me being out here with the Wanna Be Clutter Free podcast and kind of talking about this stuff? Are there things you like about it? Yeah, I like it because then it gets me to organize and declutter my room because... <laughs> I sometimes have a lot of things that need, and it's about to be Christmas or my birthday, and I'm going to get a lot of new things. So then we go through my room and declutter the items. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Are there some things that you don't like about me having my podcast and doing this and talking about it all the time? Yes, because then we have to declutter more (laughs) than we usually would. (laughs) I love it. It's fine, because yeah. I kind of like it. Kind of the like scale it. of 1 to 10, I probably like it 7. All right. Okay. Like, Yeah, 7 That's out of 10. That's pretty positive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that as a positive. So do you like how your room currently is? Do you like how it's set up and how it currently is? Yeah. I mean, I like that we reorganized my Lego shelves. Yeah. Because, yeah, I was getting a lot of Legos, and yeah, we had, like, nowhere to put them, so then we cleared off my bookshelf Mm -hmm. and put some Legos there, and I actually like them over there, and I like the shelf all the way at the bottom in the middle, Yeah. so yeah. Cool. Yeah, we rearranged that, which Mm -hmm. I really like. I think at one point, when we very, the very first time we put those up, we had the shelves maybe a little less in line. Yeah. We kind of had them randomized a little bit more. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. I like having like a street of Legos instead of like, oh, here's something. Oh, here's another thing. Here's another thing. Yeah. Like floating islands of Legos. <laughs> I did not like that. Didn't like the floating islands. Likes <laughs> the straight lines mm. and more shelf like. So mm. we have uh, rearranged that. But we do have one floating shelf now in the middle. But that's okay. That's okay. Because it, it's broken up by. You mm-hmm. have the big Harry Potter castle uh, <laughs> yeah. Lego. Yeah. So, like, you can go from the top of the Harry Potter castle to the shelf and the shelf. To... Yeah. yeah. So, I always tell people that I am the minimalist of the family. And I don't necessarily request that you or Daddy be minimalists. Mm-hmm. Right? I like that we don't have a lot of clutter. I think that's also why I changed the name of the podcast to Want to Be Clutter Free. Because I feel like that maybe encapsulated our family a little bit better too yeah because we weren't minimalist right we were clutter free yeah and so you know you have a lot of lego that's Mm -hmm. not i'm i make no and we uh, have organized lego bins totally red orange yellow green blue pink and purple brown like reddish brown and brown then we have beige and gold white and gray and black Yep. So. Yeah. So we took one of those Ikea units and we actually did color organize the Legos. So how do you feel about that? Do you like doing that? I know we have taken some sets and sometimes that makes it challenging to then rebuild the set later if mm-hmm. you want, but also it makes it a little bit easier to be more creative and build your own things. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Also, it's actually kind of easier to build the set because... Hmm. Then, like, oh, we have to find this color piece. Go to this bin and search through it. Instead of having one gigantic bin and having to go through all the colors to find one piece. Ah, that's true. That would be really annoying. Yeah. And then also to be more creative if you, like, want, oh, I want this or that purple and pink block. 
then you can go to the purple and pink bin and find what you want. Huh. I do think it takes us a little extra time to put them away mm -hmm. when we're breaking them down. Yeah. Um, but I think it ends up working out in the end. Mm -hmm. And, like, if I have a Lego set that I really, like, I want to take it down, but I don't want to have to go through the bins again, we could, like, go through, like, instruction book and like have bags of the like the actual bags right and like label them that's true it's like i really want to do that yeah like if you have a set that's put together we could mm -hmm. just keep like it the harry potter book. puzzle oh my so gosh if we took that apart ooh, i mean that one took us a whole week to put together yeah a whole <laughs> it was 30 bags i think or 29 it was a very large set. It was huge. Yeah. Huge. So I definitely, our family cannot be classified as minimalists. We're, we only have so many pieces or items, things, because that thing had 6,000 pieces, over 6,000 pieces. 6,020. Yeah. So we definitely are not an item family. Like, we only have a certain set of items. But mm -hmm. I do think we have a lot less stuff than a lot of people we know. So let's kind of talk about that. How do you feel when your friends are over and they get to play in your room? You got to have a play date today. Mm -hmm. Impromptu. We just had two friends randomly come over after school today. Mm -hmm. um, so how was that? Do you like having your friends over? Yeah, I like having my friends over. But if, like, we take out some things and leave a mess, I'm like, mm, my room is messy. I do not like when my room is messy. Yeah. So then, like, I don't like when the floor is messy, but when my desk is messy, it's okay. Because I don't use it as much as I use my floor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But I still like my desk to be cleanish. Yeah. I don't like to have, like, piles of things there. All right. Are there any other things you think we need to add to your room for organization or any other places or things in your room you'd like better organized? don't really like the like hmm, what's it called again what's on it the jewelry oh yeah like the, the pillow, cork board thing yeah the cork board ah. jewelry covered in the pillow yeah like the pillowcase um i don't okay. really like that i'd okay. rather like kind of shelves like necklaces bracelets oh, okay earrings all right so I'd a like, new jewelry organizer yeah all right that's doable don't really like that and then like could we have all my like art supplies organized yeah like my pencils and pens and erasers yeah I like how that's organized yeah i like how most of it is organized but yeah a new jewelry organizer would be nice because i don't really like the, the hooks sure stuff. oh and also into her rings I don't have any. So. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, a new jewelry organizer. All right. Mm -hmm. That's fun to know. All right. So, what about when you go over to friends' houses with a lot of toys? How do you feel in that situation? Well, when I ask them, like, where's a piece of paper? And they tell me, like, oh, in that drawer right there. And I'm like, I look in the drawer and then... I don't see the piece of paper. I'm like, could you show me exactly where the piece of paper is? <laughs> and then also when I'm in their room, I'm like, okay, it's messier than my room and it is hard to find what you tell me to find. So yeah, then I'm just like, okay, it's your house and it's your room. Yeah. So do whatever you want with it, but please don't make my room this messy <laughs> when you're over. Yeah. And I don't try to clean their room because it would take a while and it's their stuff. So. Yeah, it's yeah. their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we kind of have that rule of, you know, I'll help you declutter, but I don't mm -hmm. declutter your stuff without your input, right? Yeah, like my friend got this, like, bead thing from their teacher and... They put it in their backpack, and it got all messed up. Oh. It's like those perler beads we sorted. Oh, yeah. yeah. But way harder, because they're iridescent. Oh, should we tell people about the perler bead sorting project that we did? At your request? Yeah. 
So, yeah, we had a bin of perler beads, and it took for, like, I was building this Minecraft 3D house, like, not, like, because perler beads are kind of square, and you melt them in squares. Yeah. So, yeah, I was trying to make it out of, like, a Minecraft house, but it I was looking for this one color and it was hard to find a lot of that color. We had to like, okay, grab a handful, sort through it, find the color. Grab another handful, sort through it, find the color. Grab another handful, sort through it, find the color. And by then you only have like 30 of those colors. Mm. So then we got this organizer. So then we like grabbed a handful or two and sorted through it and put the beads in each layer and now it's really easy to find all the colors because during my play date today we were using the perler beads so it was nice to just like okay i want this color this bin this color this bin so yeah i made it easier to find the color like way easier yeah. Otherwise, it was hard. It would have taken us like 20 minutes to make one sure. set. Yeah, and you made them real fast. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, keychains, really. Yeah, just for a little backstory for those of you listening, we took a 27,000 bin. No, 22,000. 22,000? Okay, sorry. We took a 22,000 perler bead bin right or like mm-hmm. one of those things you got off on yeah, Amazon. Yeah I feel like we had already used like a thousand. Sure we would probably so. used a thousand at this point so 21,000 or so <laughs> counting perler beads and basically sorted them into their own individual colors. It took us about two weeks right? Yeah I mean we didn't do it every day. No and so. it, we didn't we did like a couple handfuls at a time mm-hmm. and we would do it while we were watching tv or something in the evening or on the weekends, just kind of as we got up and around for the day. So it wasn't too much work. It was just a little tedious, but we got those kind of knocked out in a couple weeks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so now we have them all sorted, which makes it much easier for crafting. But there's some work that goes involved. Same with the Legos. So kind of we did the same thing with the Legos and sorted those into color bins. So it's our own little mini version of the home edit over here. Mm-hmm. And also... <laughs> With the perler beads, sorting them, it hurt your eyes so much. <laughs> so, like, you had to have a proper light. Because if you didn't have a proper light, the greens and the blues, like, yeah. one green looked like green. The other green looked greenish blue, but more green than blue. Yeah. So, you had to sort between those, and it was like, okay, which one's this? Which one's this? Huh? Are they the same color? <laughs> they're different colors this one's the same color it yeah those were the hardest colors to sort i feel like yeah the light greenish blue the greenish blue was the hardest color to sort i feel like and i think also just to point out that this was something she wanted to do so i facilitated uh and helped her with it but this was something that was on her accord so if your kids are not on board with organizing their things in color, I would rec- I wouldn't recommend doing it because mm-hmm. they might get mixed up at the end. So she really likes them separated in color and so that worked out really well for yeah, us. Yeah, because it makes it easy to find. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break and then we can talk about ways that we declutter that you like. Okay. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the face of motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're, Amy, more of a we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. So do you ever get jealous when you go over to a friend's house and they have 
more toys than you? Not really. Because hmm. I don't have many toys that I want and the toys that I have that I like, though some of them are hidden away in my closet. That's true. They're high up. So we should go through my closet again. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> I don't really want to, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And some of them don't even have batteries. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we do need to get some batteries for some mm -hmm. of your things that uh, need some batteries so we can work on that. Yeah, like my little live pets, mm -hmm. walkie-talkies. Ah, walkie-talkies. And I think those, like you set up the course and they run around thingies. Oh, the yeah, little know those. bugs, the hex yeah, the bugs. bugs? Yes, the yeah. bugs. All right. I don't quite know what they're called. And the grab tracks ah. is fun, too. Yeah, but that doesn't need battery, thankfully. That, that runs on gravity. <laughs> gravity, that's why it's called grab tracks. Yep, exactly. Because it tracks and gravity. Grab yep. tracks. Perfect. Yeah. So a lot of those are building kind of mm -hmm. things, right? I mean, the little yeah. life pets are kind of, since we only have a fish as a pet, um, it's kind of nice yeah, to have little, real, little robotic pets. And let's see what else. Yeah. And then the building things, which you really like being able to be creative and rebuild things. Mm -hmm. But that's the good grab to know. Tracks, you can, yeah, the grab tracks, they have instructions to do some. And then you can also just make your own. Sure. Though the make your own is hard. It is hard. It's <laughs> tough. We tried to make our own. They're real hard. Yeah. They're hard. But it's good. Especially with the amount of pieces you have. Yeah. You have to do it with a specific amount of pieces. That's true. Yeah. We can get a few more so, of yeah. those. Those are fun. Mm -hmm. The pieces would be nice. Yeah. All right. I'll make sure I link to the Gravitrax and the Perler Beads and the Organizer mm -hmm. and things like that in the show notes. So if people want them, they can find them. Okay. So if parents want to help their kids declutter... Where do you think they should start? Probably with the toys that the kids don't play with. All right. Because if they don't play with them, so like mm -hmm. if they're like, what's that? Ask them, do you want to keep that or no? And they're like, hmm. If they can't decide, then probably take it as a yes, because what if they want it later? And then you have to get it again. Yeah. That's annoying. Yeah. But then... The toys that they do play with, you should go with those last because they play with the most and, and it'll be the hardest and probably take the most time. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. What's one of the ways that we declutter that you like? Do you like when I basically, I'm the one holding the things up and you make the quick decision? Yes. Okay. So that's the easiest way for mm -hmm. you. So like take a bin or take like a pile of stuff. Yeah. And then hold something up for your kids. And then if they say yes, put it in a yes pile. If they say no, put it in a no pile. If they're so-so, put it in a maybe pile and you can go through it another time. Yeah. Or go through it later. Yeah. So one thing I've suggested is putting it in a maybe box, closing it, putting it away, and then getting it out in a few months. Tell me what you think of this. And then saying if you can guess what's in it you get to keep it but if you can't guess what's in the box we're going to donate it would you like that or not like that that sounds fun actually <laughs> it sounds kind of fun all right well maybe we'll do that with some of your stuff we haven't really done that in the past because we again we i got to the point where we weren't buying you a ton of toys so i didn't feel super under overrun with toys mm -hmm. um when like, we were i don't have stuff. anything I mean, I have yeah. some things, like my closet, we have this whole like bookshelf, yeah. but two shelves in a row, and we have those bins in there. Mm -hmm. We have some things in there. Yep. We also have the bookshelf, my desk drawers. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I have a few more things in my closet yeah, on just... the upper shelves, yeah. and uh, yeah, but I don't have many toys, really. It's true. Lots of Lego. Lots, lots of lots of Lego. Lots of books. Lots of Lego. Mm -hmm. New I books. I love yeah. reading. Yeah. So that's always nice. And lots of stuffies. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuffies. I have 41. <laughs> <laughs> See, not minimalist when it comes to stuffies. Yeah. I actually had this other fun idea too. I just recommended this to my client was to take a picture of the stuffy and then mm -hmm. have you write a little story about it, mm -hmm. about like where you got it, what its name is, why it was special to you. Uh, because I was realizing with Marshy, do you remember Marshy's full name? Because I kind of forgot Marshy's full uh, name. Unicorn Marshmallow 
Lovey, lovey. Oh, no. I... <gasps> You're even forgetting Marshy's name. Okay, my grandma remembered it. Yeah. But now I forgot. Graham wrote it down, thank goodness, in a yes. book. Um... Oh, okay, we'll have to so, find it. Unicorn, marshmallow, lovey, lovey. No, snowy, lovey, lovey. Cuddly, fluffy, I think. All right. Unicorn, marshmallow, lovey, lovey, snowy, cuddly, fluffy. I think it's unicorn, marshmallow, snowy, snowy lovey, 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 cuddly, cuddly fluffy. fluffy. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. But for a moment, I was like, because I gave her a super long name. Well, it kept growing. Yeah, it kept growing. And now I regret it. <laughs> it should just be Marshy. Well, that's fine. So I ended up, well, I guess you might have ended up nicknaming it Marshy, Marshy yeah. but you wanted us to say that Stuffy's name every single night when we said goodnight. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a running joke. And so we tried to shorten it to Marshy, but you really didn't like it. But it's so interesting because that was such a big part of our life for like a year. Mm-hmm. And now you can't even remember it. So I like this idea of creating a little yearbook for your stuffies and and writing down their little stories because some of them have some fun stories and some of them won't we can do yeah, a group I got picture unicorn, but... marshmallow snowy lovey lovey cuddly fluffy nicknamed marshy now at legoland when yeah. we played a game and i got 17 points and it was 16 so yeah, yeah. or yeah you were yeah. able to get that one yep mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i got that one and i loved it for so long and now, I couldn't even remember her name. Oh, So I do think there's, there's a couple points there. Mm-hmm. One, I'm really glad that we said yes and played the game. Because we don't normally play those yeah. carnival games. But for some reason, you were really into it. And I think we even it was a walked fish around. Game. Yeah, it was a fish, fish game. Mm-hmm. And I think we even walked around the park and came back to it because you really wanted to do it. And like, it was like. We hadn't really had that before. So we said yes. And thankfully we did because this was in February. Two years ago. Well, but it was February of 2020. So it was right before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And so we actually didn't go back. It was at Legoland. And we didn't go back to Legoland for a year and a half after that. So I was really happy that we ended up saying yes. And played that well, game. you ended up saying yes. I don't yeah. think Daddy was there. No, Daddy wasn't there. It was just just me. So okay. I ended up saying yes, and we ended up buying this thing. And I'm not going to lie, parents. I did actually look up on Amazon to see if I could get this kind of stuffed animal for less than it was going to cost me. Because, you know, at the when you play these carnival games, there's no guarantee that you're going to get enough points mm-hmm. to get the thing that they wanted. Um, so thankfully we did because I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to spend 20 and I think we spent 20 bucks on it. And I thought, well, can we get a stuffy for $20 that you would like as much? And we looked and I couldn't find anything online. So then I think that was the deciding factor in me saying yes, was knowing that I couldn't readily get one available. And then I was just really happy in the end we did. But also the second point I wanted to make was Things that seem so permanent and so that you're so in love with really are passing. For you growing up, for us as adults, the things that we have pined for, that we wanted, that we really were so attached to, eventually that feeling will pass and we won't be as attached to them and we'll be ready to let them go. So if you are having and hawing as an adult uh, with your things, know that there's going to come a time that you were like, I can't believe I was ever that in love with that thing. So you can probably let it go. But if your kids are still attached, by no means force them because the time will come uh, where that will pass and they'll be ready to let go. And and then you'll look back and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how quickly that that phase is gone. So, um, but I don't look back on it. I mean, I love that we had that moment. Um, I don't look back uh, with regret or anything. Like I'm not sad that you no, no longer have that connection with Marshy. I'm going to go with Marshy. Um, (laughs) But it's just, yeah, one of those things that I think we can just appreciate while we have it and and know and lean into that moment while it's here, right? And enjoy it while it's here and then just let it go as it passes. So, Mm -hmm. all right, cool. Anything else you want to add about poor little Marshy? No, all good. No, but yeah, I'm surprised (laughs) too. At the time, I'm pretty sure I was probably surprised that you said yes, because we don't usually play those games. Yeah. Like, we usually walk past them, and I don't usually want to play those games. 
So it was a rare occasion that I wanted to play one of those games, and you said yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. glad you said yes. Me too. And also, we did take a moment of we didn't we didn't do an impulse buy, right? We still. You had a moment of where you wanted to play it. I said, well, let's walk around still and see what else we want to do. And then you still wanted to go back and play that game before we left. So even an hour or so later, you were still into it. So I think that was also a little bit of a pause, not doing the impulse buy. And then it really made it more special when we did go back and get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So are there things that parents should not do when they're decluttering with their kids? Are there any things that maybe I've done that you didn't like what we did when we were decluttering or anything that you can just think of that you're like, oh, don't do that. I would hate if that happened. Well, I would probably hate if you got rid of something and you didn't tell me that you were uh -huh. going to get rid of it. So parents, if you're thinking of getting rid of something, ask them first. And if they say, yes, keep it, then keep it. But if they're like, now that I think about it, I don't really want to keep that anymore then you can get rid of it but they're still like mm, maybe then keep it because what if you get rid of it and then they're like why did you get rid of that yeah. i wanted to keep it yeah then you'll have to get it back somehow or just go on nice never remembering it again <laughs> <laughs> so one thing i was gonna say there is i don't declutter your stuff without you right mm -hmm. So I and tell I'm parents not know. to do that. I tell parents don't declutter kids' stuff without their input because it is your <laughs> stuff, right? I mean, your stuff in your room is probably how adults feel about their house, right? Their hobbies, their things. You wouldn't want someone to come in and take your things uh, without you knowing. So same back to your kids. And then also I would recommend, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but doing it in shorter increments, right? Yes, because if you spend like an hour and a half decluttering, your kids get like, uh can we go do something else like an hour into it and you're like yeah. no we still have 30 more minutes to go so do it in like 30 minutes or even like 15 minutes a day or yeah even if you don't want it to be that much you can do like five minutes a day totally that works do like one bin one mm -hmm. category maybe at yeah. a time and get through it quickly or even if you don't declutter that much do like 30 minutes every month or every yeah. other month there you go if you get rid of a lot of things one time maybe like skip a month and then do it so that you can gather up more things then decide no nope, i don't want that anymore <laughs> cool <laughs> instead of having to do it like every single day for like an hour if you yeah. have a bunch of things oh that would take so long and by the end of the week i'd be like falling asleep in class <laughs> yeah true how do you like the idea of looking at all your things and picking your favorite to put back in the bin and when the bin is full then you know you've kept your favorites at least and the others can go yeah that sounds good like if you have an overflowing bin of, mm -hmm. or two bins of these things like i have two bins of art and crafts but some of them are like a big box of markers so they take up more space in the box. And if you have a lot of other things you want to keep, then you need more than one box so that you have enough space and you don't jam yeah. it. And it's overflowing. And then it's easy to grab the things later. Right. Well, let's pretend, though, that you we haven't been decluttering, right? Mm -hmm. Let's pretend that your room has a ton of toys in it mm -hmm. and it's kind of a mess because you've just been playing and you don't like to put your things away and you don't know where they're supposed to go. But I like doing um, <laughs> Well, I know, but we're pretending, right? Because we're helping people that aren't in our situation right because i yeah. feel like your room is pretty neat and orderly but it's because we've done work to get there so if you were just starting from scratch and you hadn't you hadn't done all that work if we were looking at toys and we said okay now it it's in two bins now but we really only have room for one bin how about you pick your favorite things and put them in this bin first and when that bin's full the things that don't fit in there we're gonna go give them to another family um, or someone else that can use them or want them. How does that feel to you? Well, that sounds like a good idea, but also think about what if they're like, oh, well, I also kind of really want this toy too. Then maybe make an exception and try to fit it in the bin. Because if they really want it, well, also think, 
will you play with this? Mm -hmm. If you won't play with it, then don't keep it. And also while you start, say, okay, so if you like it and you will play with it, then you can keep it. If you won't play with it or you don't like it, then get rid of it. And one time at the book fair, when mm. I saw a pen, it, I was like, "Will do I want this? Yes. Will I use it? No. So I didn't get it because I was probably going to get rid of it later. Mm. But then I also got one with a squishy avocado on it. And I was like, I want that avocado. So then I got the pen because... Avocado and pen come together. The one with the avocado, not yeah. the pen you didn't like. Yeah, so yes. you passed up the one and got mm -hmm. the one you liked more. Yeah, um, I and I took that. the avocado off. Yeah, and now you just play with the avocado. Yeah. You can use the pen if you want. Perfect. All right, look, win-win right there. Yep. Okay, perfect. Is there anything you've decluttered that you miss that you wish you wouldn't have decluttered? Well, the first thought that comes to mind is the poops-a-lot. It was the poops-a-lot <laughs> cat. And if you fed it and you walked it, it would poop. And then you pick up the poop and use it as food. Now that I, like, really think about it, I don't think there's anything that I wish I hadn't decluttered. The, like, the easiest thought is to poop a lot, but... Yeah. You didn't really play with it much. I didn't really play with it. I, like, walked it. There you go. In yeah. my back in my closet, you go. Right. One of those lessons, so I didn't play with right? It yeah. A lot. One of those lessons of something that looked like it was going to be really fun. And then it turns out to not be that much fun. Yeah. You got can also it. get reality little ones again. that go that attach to the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. You do yeah. tend to like little things, though, yes. right? Like you didn't like Barbie so much, but mm. you liked the sister and the little accessories and mm -hmm. things like that. So the littler things. Yeah, I kept those because yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, because some of my friends when they came over to my house ah. would, like, we would play with those and I enjoyed it. So I kept those that we will probably play with. We probably wouldn't play with the adults that right. much. So I kept the pets and I kept the mermaid. I kept the horse. I kept. All the animals, I think. Right. The animals' accessories, the kids, and their accessories. Very cool. So, yeah. All right. Do you like that we generally do two big t declutter sessions? So, like, you mentioned that at the very beginning of this episode, you talked about we declutter usually right around holidays, like Christmas, because mm -hmm. that's big gift-giving times, and then and your then birthday, birthday, which is thankfully in the summer, so we mm -hmm. have a really big gap between the two. Do you like that we do it that way? Yes, I like that we do it that way because I'm going to get a bunch of toys and I'm probably going to play with those more than I play with my old toys. Mm -hmm. So just go through it then instead of having to go through your new toys too. So yeah, I like we that we do that because then you get through a smaller amount and then you get a lot of toys. Because if you don't do that, you're probably just going to have a bunch of toys that you don't play with. Yeah. So when you're like 13 or <laughs> older, yeah. then you got to go through all your littler, like when you were littler toys. Yeah. And you also have to go through like your 10-year-old toys. True. And then, yeah, it just makes it a big process of having to go through all of them. So, yeah. Also, thinking back to do it in shorter um, amounts of time, because then you don't get tired. Yeah. Because like, when you're tired, you don't make the best decisions. And then you might think, can we get, still get that back? Yeah. And then you're like, true. nope, it's, it's gone. Sorry. It's true. Yeah, right. Making fresh, yeah, making decisions when you're fresh and you're uh -huh. not as tired and overwhelmed and grumpy, right? Everyone gets yeah. grumpy and hangry. We always have try to have snacks on hand uh -huh. when we're decluttering. Um, so, like, take yeah. five minute breaks. Oh, for sure. To like get a snack. Yeah, refresh for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, this has been so much fun. I always end my episodes with three rapid fire questions. Um, basically, that just means answer what comes to your mind first. So the first one is, what does clutter-free mean to you? Um, Clutter-free means like not having, well, to me, it means like, yeah, clutter, like it means like a bunch of things. So on this desk, if you had like things piled up everywhere and it was hard for you to reach your computer, that you would really need to go through all of that. Yeah. Like, go through all of that. Like, probably get rid of more than half of the papers, probably. Yeah. So, so to paraphrase, yeah. clutter-free makes it easier to live? Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's the simple. Do the things you need to do. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. What advice do you have for kids when it comes to decluttering? Do you have any quick little pieces that you... Of wisdom? Hmm, let me think. Yeah, if you have a bunch of something and you don't play with some of them, I would probably say keep the ones that you play with most and get rid of the others okay. or, like, donate them. Yeah, perfect. So, and then yeah. what is making you happy right now? What do you mean by right now? Well, right now in this kind of either this summer or this new school year or this week or today or... Just kind of right now where you are in life. What's making you happy? Probably that I just had a play date. Nice. So, yeah. I love it. Well, and, and having... going well, too. Yeah, and having less stuff makes it easier for us to say, sure, when your friends come up after school and say, hey, can, can we come over? We say, yeah, no problem. Makes yeah. it easier. Yeah, it does. So, all right. Impromptu play date. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Mm -hmm. This was super fun. I really appreciate you coming on and talking and just being so open and honest. And I'm excited about looking at getting you a new jewelry organizer mm -hmm. and making a little yearbook for all of our stuffies so that yeah. we can remember them and how special they have been to us Even in our if life. We get rid of some of them. Right. No big deal. Oh, one of them, I'm probably going to say, I got this. From a McDonald's Happy Meal. Totally. Because <laughs> one of them, my Stitch one, I got it from a McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. All right. That's probably going to be what it says. Cool. Happy <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Mwah. You are welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed that show. Like I said, it was a little bit different than normal, uh, but I really enjoyed doing that. And I do apologize. I'm not using her name on this show. I do want to help her have some anonymity, and I do like to keep her privacy as this goes out throughout the world. So thank you so much for joining me today. I would actually love to hear your thoughts on the episode. Did you like this? Should I interview my husband next and talk about decluttering with him and what he likes and doesn't like and how he feels about living with a wife who runs this podcast and is always decluttering and organizing the house? I'm thinking that the answer is going to be yes, but I would just love to know your thoughts. So let me know what you thought about this episode. What did you think about her advice to you as the parent and also to kids who are looking to declutter and what it's like uh, for her? So let me know what you think. Again, you can send me a DM on Instagram or you can comment on this post. I am at wannabe clutter free on the social channels, or you can come on over to the wannabe minimalist family group on Facebook and you can share with the community there. There will be a discussion thread for this episode and we would love to chat with you in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. If you made it this far, just a reminder that I would be thrilled if you left a rating and a review for this show. It will only take a minute and it means the world to me. So thank you so much for helping me out. And with that, I hope you have an amazing day. I'm going to see you back here next week. It's going to be a solo show, and I'm going to be talking about being vulnerable. So if you have not noticed yet, um, and I probably haven't posted it as this episode airs, but in the next couple of days, I'm going to be posting about doing a reset around our home. I mean, I looked around after summer, school started this week, and our house had gotten a little out of sorts. So I wanted to show you what it is like when things do get out of order, how I do resets in each of the rooms. So I'm going to be going around the different rooms in our home. I actually did my desk today. So I took a time-lapse video of that. I'm going to be talking about that 
um, and showing that on social. So if you want to join me, come on over to Instagram, want to be clutter free over there and uh, just take a look. And I, this was sparked because um, I'm working with a client right now. And she was saying that she was nervous to show me one of the spaces in her home. And I told her that I'm not judging her. I'm here to help her. But it made me aware that I need to show more of my real life, right? My true life and how things really are because things are not perfect in my home. I don't believe in perfection. I really think that we were are constantly learning and growing and doing new things. So I am excited to show that. I'm scared and nervous. Being vulnerable and being honest is difficult. So I am actually really nervous about it, but I think it's going to be great. And um, I'm hoping that it resonates with you as uh, I kind of show that and show you what I'm going to do over the next 30 days to grow in our home as well. So all right, check that out. That'll be out next week, but you can join me on Instagram and see a little bit of a preview. And I'll be talking about how it feels to go through this process and how to be vulnerable in your life and how decluttering can actually help you move past those fears and live into you into your true authentic self. And so I hope you enjoy me next week. Uh, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it because you won't want to miss that one. And I'll have some more amazing episodes coming up soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you are listening to this podcast. All right, until next time, take care, think clutter free, and remember, I believe in you. I know you can do this. I'm Deanna Yates, and you've been listening to Wanna Be Clutter Free. I'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>